if people like Sharknado, they're going to absolutely love this. There's, they're going to riot if there's not a second one the next summer. It's going to become appointment television, just like Sharknado has done for the last six years. So no chainsaws. No chainsaw. But there is, there is a signature weapon. It's very important. Yes, the ladies was talking about it briefly. I don't know. They get, I can't confirm or deny. But there is a double bladed. There's a double bladed samurai sword. Oh yes. But there's something special about this sword. It's like no other double bladed samurai sword ever. So I Success unshared is failure. And I believe that I can create an asset that would be very successful and help the tide rise for all the ships that were in the water. And that's always very important. But now, let me tell you, once we've shot it, now that it's done, the movie's excellent. It's so much better than Sharknado 1. <laughs> James Cameron. No, we're not trying to deliver James Cameron. I'm working within the playing field for the audience that I'm trying to appeal to, and I think we've done that beautifully. Hunter Shaw, nothing like Finn Shepard. Hunter Shaw is a loner. Hunter Shaw is a fireman who stepped away from saving lives because he could not save every life. Probably one of the firemen in 9-11 who did the best he could, but still, people perished. And it affected him to the point where he needed to distance himself. So. He went out on the ocean, and he became a, a you know, just a, a sport fisherman, and found himself in the, you know, Southeast Asia, and this wonderful little nondescript island. Is that how you ended up filming in Thailand? We ended up filming in Thailand because I had enough freezing my ass off in Bulgaria and Romania. <laughs> so when I wrote this movie, there was like no way. My first thought was Hawaii, but Hawaii is very expensive and um, didn't have $5 million to shoot this movie. Um, but we needed to find a tropical environment. And shooting in Thailand worked out even better because when the tide goes out in Thailand, it goes out for like four or five miles. So any boat that's at shore lands in the sand. And they're strewn all over the place until the water comes and picks them up again. So we were very selective when we were shooting specific scenes. Like, oh my God, look at this. It looks like it's a catastrophe over here. And these dead, this dead wood that you can't see. So cool. Oh, it's right. perfect. It's muddy. It's so beautiful. Thailand is spectacular. It just like, every day it kept getting better. When we were doing our pre-production and scouting locations, I'd be like, I, get, I literally would get goosebumps. I'm so excited to tell this story. I mean, we I, we came up with the story, but then seeing it come to life, seeing all the puzzle pieces get put together, like, oh my God, this is where we're going to shoot the beach scene. This is where we're going to have, we've got this like fish market and it, the lighting from the side was so spooky. And people are just walking around, oh my God, and when we do this in the morning and there's nobody here, we've got zombies from here. It's going to shit out of people. It's going to be so good. So it August 17th, you'll watch Zombie Tide Away and share some of the excitement that I have with everyone. Tell them to watch it, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks. 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 Tell us about your character. Ray. So I'm Uncle Ray. Uncle uh, Ray. Ray McCray. I am, I am that guy in your family that everybody knows and loves, everybody needs and wants, but not everybody understands. No, I am the survival gear. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so... <coughs> Literally, Uncle Ray is that is that one person that you know that you need, but sometimes you don't want to call and ask for help from. He's that person that you you, you, you can't live without, but sometimes you don't want to live with. Is that fair? He's that guy. Literally, he's that guy. And it was fun becoming him. I'll be honest. When I got the email, I thought it was a scam. I was like, this ain't real. Uncle Ray's that guy. All right. You, he's that. He's the one that will. He's the friendliest to the friendly until you make him mad. Then he becomes that voice in the night that you never want to hear. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> he's that guy. He's definitely. I mean, you asked somebody, have you heard of Sharknado? The answer is yes. So 
to be able to be like, have you heard of Sharknado? Well, this is like the next Sharknado. That's like an honor, and it's so fun, and it's it's crazy and it's silly, but that's why we love it, right? That's what makes it so yes. special. It's like it's this comical but amazingly, yes. and I think with this one too, there's such a great story to it, and like you connect to these characters. Definitely a um, homage to the '80s, like zombie film era, and yeah. that's really what Anthony wanted to do. And we honestly had a wonderful time shooting it because because of the unrealisticness of like what we are shooting, but we're still gonna have a wonderful time shooting it and having a great time and trying to make it as realistic as we can. So I will say that it's it's a spin-off of what the genre of what what Sharknado is, but it's its own different category. In yeah, but no one can ever top There's Sharknado. There's no sharks. Sharknado is its own thing. I mean, it's awesome. Exactly. There's but still water involved. So. Exactly. And so we're just in the spirit of that and of the genre, making our own genre in the in in the zombie world of, and sci-fi of just something people can enjoy. <laughs> no. We will. And have we will. a good time yeah. and just just have fun watching it. it have fun watching it and enjoy and enjoy the ridiculous of it. Yeah. You know. Well, what I can say about my character, uh, his name is Blaine. We'll start with that. <laughs> um, he's a total dick. He's a total dick. So are you the villain? Set. It's hilarious. <laughs> he's a total dick. Are you the villain? No, I'm not the villain. Maybe I'm the villain. <laughs> no, you gotta watch it. No, um, he was a very different character than what I'm used to playing, and it was really exciting for me to play him just because it was so other. So he's kind of a dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest about the challenges, you know, my mom's from Norway. I spent part of my life in Norway. I like the snow. This was, you know, I mean, I live in LA. It gets hot as hell in LA, but it's dry, you know. Thailand was brutal. 110, 120% humidity, ranching sweat. Like, you wouldn't believe. Uh, I had to have a girl literally follow me around on set and pad my face pretty much every time I was on set. And that's no joke because it was hot. So, but I loved it though, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to watch too much. What you want to do is get your beer and your popcorn on August 17 and watch the show, right? I mean, that's what you want to that's do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you feel you're prepared for a zombie apocalypse if it happens now? Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I mean, what do you do? You just like run and scream and there's blood? I'm dead. The first, I'm one of the first that are dead, to be honest with you. <laughs> if you're asking about me, Lincoln Beverage, yes. Okay. Yeah. I know. When, when I first moved to LA, my mother sent me a earthquake preparedness package. So I have that. I think, I mean, I think you grab a knife. I don't know. I mean, like, dude, what's the genre? You know, like, what zombies? Is they like, stab in the head, shoot him in the head? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I think I'd be screwed, to be honest. Are there any yeah. zombie sharks? <laughs> well, wait and see. Well, but see, you know, I think that's the, the weird thing that happened on that first movie is that um, we talk about it a lot. Everybody always asks, why was it successful? Well, we don't know. The main thing is that it wasn't marketed. I mean, it was. It wasn't because they didn't market it. It's just that they do like they did like whatever thirty or forty sci-fi movies a year. It was just another one of their movies. But it somehow struck a nerve, and the fans found us. We did a little grassroots stuff, but we were made by the fans, and we always remembered that while we made the other films. You know, and um, we had fun making them. I'm a big nerd, and so there's a lot of stuff in these movies that are that are very you know paying homage to things, but also just has my little weird sense of humor. I was the weird kid in high school, and so the fact that the most popular thing I did was the weirdest thing I did. There, so I got together with our editor and somebody else, and we just sat to QC the movie and watch it for the first time. And I sat there after it was over, and going, this is like three weeks before it aired, and I'm like. I think we made the weirdest sci-fi movie ever. And if we're lucky, maybe it'll be a cult film in five years. Because it was weird. And then you look at it now and it's just Sharknado. But it's a weird film. And so I think that's what it was. And it was something that families could enjoy. It's not, you know, we were very cognizant. You know, there's blood and guts in these movies. But but it, there was a kind of a family message to it. And so people could get together and have fun. They didn't have to spend 20 bucks going to a movie theater. They could sit home, have a party, and watch it on TV. And we crammed these movies with a lot of stuff. 
you know, we, we have the same budgets that a lot of these other low-budget movies, but we're just always throwing more things in there. And so with Zombie Tidal Wave, it was a chance, you know, I've never gotten to do a zombie movie. And so it's like, can, what can we do that's different? And Ryan goes, hey, let's go do Zombie Tidal Wave. It's like, okay, let's, let's go for it. We're making it like an old-school 1980s zombie movie. There's a lot of full cheat to this film. <laughs> and and there's, a, there's a lot of, like, there's tons of Easter eggs for anybody that loves those movies. Oh. So, so, uh, so because we were doing the 80s, I needed to have a douchebag. And so I named him in the script Blaine, which is a sort of a reference. Yes. Well, I, I will tell you, I was asked tonight, I was said, hey, so I heard you play Blaine, and every Blaine I've ever personally known has been a douchebag. What do you have to say? <laughs> Well, there you have it. So, so because he was playing Blaine, and I'm making a little bit of homage, I go, well, you know what? He's got to wear a pink s- shirt, and he's got to have the the the, 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 the blue, the collar oh, up with the blue, okay. oh, the blue sweater. And, and I was very adamant it had to be this. And so we're in Thailand, and remember, it's like 100 plus degrees. And he comes to me and going, this is way too hot to be wearing. <laughs> and I tell him, no, you're wearing this. <laughs> Ian, Ian even told me I didn't have to wear it, but he overrid him. So, yeah, yeah, it was a great look. That wasn't the issue. It was the issue was it was 120% humidity and about 102 degrees outside. Oh. And we were on the water. But you sweated for your art. I sweated for my art. <laughs> I, I, I bled for him. Yeah. <laughs> So he, play, he plays the quintessential douchebag. And he was actually one of the, the most fun characters to write because he could do anything. He does things that just he shouldn't do, and it's just great. Well, basically what happened was he said, I met him, and he said, hey, I'm looking for a guy that acts just like you do. <laughs> oh, I no, did he, not he say that. He didn't say that. that. Could you play yourself on camera? I, I, I <laughs> fought to get you in this thing. We, he did. He did. I Actually, uh, one of the things that was... I realized with Sharknado is that I think I'm one of the only filmmakers from beginning to end that have done six movies consecutively. The only the only thing, like, you, in fact, they did five, and I think we'll have five with Indiana Jones, but from beginning to end, from one to... Blake oh, wow. Edwards came close, but he didn't do Inspector Clouseau, so I, I even beat, like, even though he did more Pink Panther movies, he, he took a break, and that was technically canon. So... It's weird, but I have yeah. to have some badge of honor with these movies. Hey, I didn't even know you, that's great. You've made like a summer tradition. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we try and continue with yeah. this. So. And I can't wait till y'all experience Zombie Titles. Neither can we. <laughs>